Well, 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 thank you for the applause in the, uh, in the audio tracks. Thanks to Renwave for the copyright free audio. Good morning. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland. And this is my uh, Twitch stream about Flutter and about this, um, this app that I'm building. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, a simple childcare uh, in English. It's, uh, it's an app that is going to help my uh, client uh, to run their uh, single person childcare business. They are taking care of children after school or uh, after daycare. <clears throat> and so they need to keep track of how many hours they um, you know, looked after the children if they had the uh, dinner if they stayed overnight and stuff like that and so ye <clears throat> yesterday we were working on fixing bugs in the um, initial um, form with all the information about the children <clears throat> let's have a quick look and I'm going to use the emulator today um, because uh, I, I don't need the the phone for what I'm going to do <clears throat> hello Agdir Welcome back, and I am sorry that I didn't see you yesterday. I was looking at the wrong chat. Uh, I had uh, two chat window in my OBS stream for some reasons, and I was looking at the wrong one, so I didn't see any of you in the chat. But um, thanks for joining yesterday, and thanks for joining again today. Right, so the, the app... Oh yeah, I wanted to show you something that uh, yesterday I was not able to show you. This is the app in French. So everything is in French here, uh, including this button and, and stuff like that. But because I'm on the emulator, I can quickly switch from French to English and go back to my app. And as soon as it comes back in focus, now everything is in English. And I like that very much because it helps me uh, see if I have uh, if I forgot any um, strings in uh, in uh, in the app. So that's why I, I tend to leave it in French so I can see immediately if I forgot something. But it's great. It's awesome. Right. What I want to do today is take this field here. And why do I have a keyboard? Oh yes, that's the <laughs> that's the phone number keyboard. I want to try and integrate a library so that I can select the international prefix because well this is going to be used here in Switzerland and some parents live in France or they just arrived in Switzerland and they still have their French phone number. So we need to be able to distinguish between French and English and we also we also would like to ha to make sure the phone number is at least valid in its in its format because <clears throat> a quick reminder uh, if we have a phone number then this icon appears and if we press here and it starts the phone app and so if there's an emergency or something we need to make sure that at least this is a good format well we of course obviously we can't make sure that it's the right phone number but at least it, it's going to be the right format so i'm going to use my other phone where i found a library which is called which is called um international phone input so we're going to try that. Let's uh, go to... Let's go to... Let's bring a web brother, browser, browser, a web thingy <laughs> here. And let's go to pub.dev and look at international phone input. Uh, international phone input number this package validates phone number input value using the lib phone number package yes that's the one we want and yeah that's some. that's what I want uh, it looks like that's what I want so 
Let's see. International phone input. Let's add that to our project. Go to the terminal. Uh, flutter pub add international phone input. And let's see. Downloading stuff. The plugin uh, use deep uh, now uses the deprecated version of the Android embedding to avoid ex unexpected random failures of future build video. Try to see if this plugin supports the Android V2 embedding. Otherwise, consider removing it since a future is a flutter. Well, <clears throat> that's uh, not encouraging. But let's give it a try. I'm going to stop the app and start it again to avoid the problem I had yesterday where Flutter needed to add stuff to the app and a hot reload or a hot restart was not enough. Okay, so while it's doing that, let's have a look. Usage, just put the component in your app. Default widget with drop, <coughs> drop down lists, and that's the thing here. Right. And enabled countries. Hmm. Hopefully, I can enable all the countries. I don't want to limit that to two countries. It's still building. Widget with, with text input only. Hmm. Do I want text input only? Maybe. Maybe. Widget with decoration using decoration over rights of a style such as hint style text. Uh, or maybe that's what I want. That's probably what I want. Okay, let's see. Okay, the application has restarted. Yes, so... Let's go... There, I think that's gonna be what I want. Bring the emulator back. Come on, and let's have a look at the phone number field. Uh, put some comments around that, and we need to return uh, this thing. And. So on phone number change, it's a function that takes string, string, string. Huh, weird. Uh, what does they say here? On phone number change, that's string number, string internationalized number, string ISO something. Okay. So that's, the, that's just that. Okay. And for now, we're going to print Print that. Print number. Print. Actually, print number. Okay, print. Is the music too loud? I hear the loud music in my headphones, but let me know in the chat. Um, the internationalized. 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 Phone number. That's hard to say. Especially in the morning. <laughs> International is... No, no. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> I don't need the braces. Uh, and then print... ISO code. ISO code. Okay. Oh, I yeah, still don't need that. Uh, initial phone number. Initial phone number. It's going to be... Like empty string for now. Initial selection. Uh, text string plus forty one. I don't know. Enabled countries. That's gonna be const, and I want plus forty one in there for now. Show country codes phones. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. And so here's the phone number. And that didn't change anything. I am disappointed. I am. I am. It didn't. It's like it didn't restart the, the app or something. So 
So maybe it's not working. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try that again. It should not return anything <laughs> like that. It shouldn't even return phone number because the hint is a string. Uh, oh, we, do we have problems? No. It's just not working, actually. It's, I think the the warning about the application being deprecated or something makes it not working. Yeah. It's not even running. Let's try Flutter Run. It's going to crash. Cannot run with sound null safety because the following dependency don't support null safety. Well, well, that's 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 <laughs> that's gonna be a quick test. All right, this is not working. Okay, um, remove. I think it's remove. Yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, clear the field that didn't uh, that didn't help, it doesn't even run, so we need to find another another uh, library. Flutter validate international phone number. Um, answer wasn't command section. I am mentioning that here. Above package is the only way I found to validate international phone number in Flutter. Okay, and what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no. International phone inputs. That's the one we just tried. So... Hmm. Have you tried text field form? Please check this doc. Well, that, that's the form validation I want to... Uh, the previous one said it used lib phone number. So maybe that's... Uh I don't want to use the regex because of the of the the difference between countries lib phone number flutter. Okay, Libana. This is the flutter implementation of lib phone number. It includes only a few features at the moment and are added when more functionality is desired. Yeah. Switch to V2 Android embedding, that's good. Update info number Java dependency to latest version. Update carrier Java, the, okay. Example. Ooh. Oh, it's async. Phone number UTL is valid. Phone number, phone number S ISO code US. Mm -hmm. mm, we can we can try that. We can try that. But we would need to have a combo box for the country. Hmm. Okay. New safety has been implemented. Last commit in September of 2021. Okay, that's not bad. 
It doesn't support multiple platforms. Package does not support Flutter platform web. I don't care. Doesn't provide any documentation. I I won't blame him them. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not very good at writing documentation, but at least we have we have examples. Let's give that a try. Let's give that a try. We're gonna have to do some work ourselves, but no big deal. Flutter pub add this thing. Okay. So far, so good. The application is not running. Okay. And then it said... Uh, this pose show details. Phone number routine. Is valid phone number. Get name for number. What's that? Get name. Oh, carrier name. I don't care about that. I don't care about that either. I'd rather have that and that. So let's start with this. Okay. Um, phone number. Unchanged. Phone number util. This music seems very loud. I don't know if uh, that's the case, but... We're going to... Turn it down a bit, and uh, uh, a notch. Okay, is valid phone number the uh, value? Okay, what does it? That's it. And if I name phone number, it's util. Auto import. Okay. It was a little bit loud. Yes, it's, I think it's better now. The name is ISO code is required. Okay. Is a second or is it ISO code? ISO code. ISO code. Let's say CH for now. And then phone number. So that's that. Phone number. And that's value. And let's do that. Future of Boolean is phone number. So then, then valid if valid, then that okay, and that and uh, and that, and um, that, and that should do it. What's wrong? Uh, missing one curly brace here. Okay, and some commas because why not? Not here though. I still. I've messed something up. There we go. No, we... A nullable expression can be used as a condition. What? To d oh. Okay. <clears throat> if valid is not null and valid Well, if it equals a true, well, I guess that's that should be enough. Okay, it's either true, and if it's null or false, then so be it. Then and then print valid equals. Mm, 
Yeah. <laughs> Curly brace and not parenthesis. Nope. Still doesn't want to do that. Undefined invalid. Uh, <clears throat> let's pretend <clears throat> I didn't do that. <clears throat> okay, let's run the app. Uh, no, it's not working. I don't want to debug it. Stop. What's wrong? What is wrong? Ah, yes. We don't that anymore in our uh, pub spec. Okay, let's bring the emulator back. Actually, I can put that full screen and the emulator is going to go away anyway. Running Gradle Task Assemble Debug. How many times have I seen that? So I've pushed a new version on the App Store and it's really easy with Flutter. So now I just boot the Mac, build the IPA and open Xcode just to send the app to the App Store. It's really cool. Really cool. And I thought putting the app on the App Store, or at least in, in test flight for the, the phone, would be a nightmare uh, based on previous experiences. But it just it just worked. Whereas sending the app to the Google Play Store, I've sent it two days ago or yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday morning, I think something like that. And it's still not validated. They're still looking at the app, so. Right, so let's uh, let's do that. Is that a a phone number that is uh, uh, it's there? Valid equals false. So this phone number is not valid. False. Uh, It's still false. So what did I, what did I do? I. What did I do? What's the phone number? Here. I said, is that a valid phone number for Switzerland? And it said no. Uh, it should be now. It's still false. Okay. Oh. What happened? So let's try. Oh, now it's true. Okay, so it's validating the the carrier. So that's that's a, a valid phone number. Right, okay. I can I can Yeah, I can do that. I need to specify the country though because if I'm using like this this is going obviously false. This is a French phone number. Okay. Okay. Uh Hmm. Uh, I have to think about that. How can I do that? How can I do that? How can I do that? I need to get a... I need to get a library with country codes. Or... Or do I have an imp just a drop down? Hmm. How would you do that? Tell me in the chat how you would do that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Hey, hey, there's plenty of room here, so we can split that in two, and have the country here a drop down with country flags, maybe. Do we have a Flutter extension for that? Flutter drop 
down, drop down, country, drop down country. Country picker or country code picker. Or flutter gems. Oh. I don't want flutter gems. I don't know what flutter gems are. Country code picker 202 updated in June of 2021. It has likes and points and it is popular. Okay. A Flutter package for showing a country code selector. It supports I18N for 70 languages. That's great. Check the examples here. And uh, no, we can't check the examples here because it doesn't work. Thank you very much. Just put the component in your application setting the unchanged callback. Country code picker. Unchange print. Okay. Initial selection IT favorite. Okay. Show country only. Show country when closed. Ooh. Just add country localization dot delegate. In the list of your delegates. Yeah, I don't know. I only need the flags anyway, I guess. We can try that. That looks great. So that's Country Code Picker and Country Picker published September 13th, 2021. So slightly more recent, less like uh, and less popular. Uh, Optional show phone code before the country name. Yes, we could use that. But does it have the ISO code for the country? Okay, so we have two options. Let's try this one. Country code picker. And then we'll try the other one if this one doesn't fit our need. Flutter pub add country code picker. Prefix drop down. Prefix drop down. Okay. Is it something that that exists in uh in pubdev pub dev prefix? Or is it uh no. So yeah, I I would add a prefix in front of the, the text. So I did install country code picker. And so this phone number now needs to return something like, um, it needs to return not a custom text field anymore. It's gonna need to return a row. Well, let's just test before we change a lot of stuff. Let's just test this um, this thing. So, country cut picker, that's the one. I should add. Show country picker. What? Show country picker. Hmm. Example. There we go. Uh, so scaffold the body center. Elevate button. On press. On press. Show country picker. Okay. Let's do that. So that's the child, and that's the child of what? Of the elevated button. Okay, so we need to get that. And we are going to return this. And it is not working because it doesn't know where to get this thing. Okay, so let's do that manually. Country picker that. that. Let's add that. Answer to my previous question. Okay. So, yes. I'm going to... Um, 
Uh huh. Did I use the wrong one? I did. I closed. I did close the window, didn't I? Yes. That's the one I want. That's the one I want. So that's not at, not that at all. So let's remove that. Okay. Remove that. Remove that. And remove that package. Country code picker is another one I want. Yes, that's I want country code picker. Uh, and I want this. Uh, this is what I want. That's what. That is what I want. And a semicolon here. And now I do this. And there we go. Okay. That's great. Now, what does that tell us when we... And how do I get the... Oh, unchanged print. Okay. Except I don't want plus three three when I select friends. I want FR. But I like I like the the fact that there's um, favorite countries here because I'm going to put for for my version for my use that's going to be Switzerland and France. Yes, and here we see. They, every country in the world has a rectangular flag, except for Switzerland. We have a square flag, and that creates problems in things like that because I guess they um, made the the width of the flag the same everywhere, which then makes the eighth of the Swiss flag bigger than the height of every other flag. Yeehaw! Go Switzerland! <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so country code picker. Uh, unchanged. Unchanged. is going to give me a country code. And what's in a country code? There's a name, a flag, a code, a dial code. There we go. I want that. That's what I want. I want... So that's country code. And print country code. The code. Let's have a look. Where's my output? Mm. Did I close the the output? Yes, I did. Let's see. Now, if I select France, it doesn't work. Did I break something? Probably by. Uh, Let's take call after dispose. Mm, okay. I'm going to guess it needs a hot restart. And let's see. Now I want. Yes, CH. Okay, so I can use that as a prefix. Triangle flag. Who's got the triangle flag? I don't I don't know any country that has a triangle flag but I would be very happy to learn something today. I don't see any triangle flags. But maybe oh. This is interesting. I didn't know there was another flag that looks square. 
Well, it's, it's not even square, it's... Uh, it's... 977, what's that country called? 977. 977 country... Good. That's phone. It's Nepal. Nepal flag. Wow. I have learned something today. Nepal has a weird flag, same as we do in Switzerland. Well, not same as, but yeah, crazy. Wow. That's certainly not usual. Well, I thought we were the only ones in the world, but no. Welcome to the band, Nepal. Oh, we can even search here. Okay, if I type Swiss, it's not... So it's not localized. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to have a look at localization later on. Um, now, how do I embed that in my form in such a way that it doesn't look weird? Let's have a look at the documentation. So it only talked about they only talk about that. Just add country localization delegate in the list of your app delegates. Well if if it's that easy then let's do that. Right? If I only have to do that, then so be it. Yes, France, Suisse, Afghanistan, Albany, Algérie. Great, now let's switch to English. Go back to the app. And uh, it says, uh, I might have to restart this one. What's that? Why, why do you say you don't have that? You do have that. Don't be silly. Oh no, you don't. Because I didn't translate those, that's why it's, it's complaining, it's complaining. France, Switzerland, Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria. Great! It is working. Awesome. Well, you know, I said I was gonna look at later, but it's done. Do I have to open that up again? Yes, I just have to open it up. Right, that's international and... Localization done. <laughs> Hello, rel re relax man. Relax man, welcome to the stream. It is for Android and iOS. It is Flutter. It is a thing made by Google. And uh, and yeah, it it I, I use Flutter on Linux to build my app. I use the I, uh, Android emulator uh, le, to, to test my app and then I send it to the App Store and the Google Play. You can write any language. Uh, do you mean for this thing, for this Flutter thing? No, you can only use Dart. That's the language that... Um, let's bring the chat on the screen. Uh, for mobile. Now, for, for this Flutter framework, tool, if you want to call it like that, it uses Dart. That's the language that uh, uses. But if you want to do some platform-specific stuff, you can choose between Java and Kotlin for the Android part, and you can choose between Swift and Objective-C for the iPhone part. But for everything that's common, if you just want to have a, an app that runs on both platforms, then it's it's using Dart, which is a, a language that Google invented too. So let's go back to the screen with the emulator. So I have that and I would like to have something that looks like that. So let's see. Let's go to the form. 
obviously I'm going to need a row here. And the row is going to have some children. And those children are going to be the country code picker with some sort of customization. And then this, but I'm going to have to update this class because this is not going to work out of the box because of the the icon. Okay, now it's complaining because I need to expand something, probably the row. It's always a pain in the bottom when you have to return rows and stuff. So I'm actually returning a padding here with that and then a row and then that as a child. So I guess that's going to be the same thing. Uh, I can do better than that. I can go there and click wrap widget with uh, padding. Oh, I can do even better than that. I can go there and click there and wrap with padding. Ba -bang. And this padding is 16, 16, 16, 0. Phone number. Oh, I didn't. That's what I want. Okay. Um, let's have a look at that. It's probably not working because I need also... I also need an expanded... So I need this and this. The children of... And expanded uses... It's expanding. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. So this is obviously not working. Up. 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 Okay. Up. <laughs> what was this up related to Agdea? Okay, so that didn't work. Nope, 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 that didn't work. So the padding is okay, the row is okay. I think... I don't... I don't... Huh. Which one of those two fields is making the app not working? That's apparently my custom form field. My own creation is failing me. Your previous comments, your previous com oh, it's your previous command is there. Be careful of the different prefix at London. Okay. I will fix that issue when it appears. Uh, is the color picker working inside a row? Yes, so the problem is my text field. I believe I can fix that. Uh, so that's the 16, 16, 16, 0. So that's around that. I also want, I also want that as a child of the row. So I want that here so that it gets aligned. And now I need to see if I can add some border or stuff like that. Yes, apparently there's a text style. Is there a decorator? That's a decorator I want. Uh, input decoration, search decoration. Uh, I would say it might be that. Because what I want is... What I want is... No, not that. I want to go to the custom text field and I want to add that. Something like that. Except it's not a decoration, it's search decoration if I have read properly. Search decoration. Or maybe not. 
Well, if I, it would help if I added that to the correct field, right? Like phone number field. That should probably help. That's the search decoration. Which language are you coding best? Which one is my main? Um, huh. Which language am I coding best? I don't know if there's a language I code best. I like them all. I I use Python, PHP, C Sharp, uh, Dart, HTML, JavaScript. If you well, JavaScript is a language. Yes, TypeScript. HTML, if you want to call that a language, even though it's not, but uh, yeah, I do all that. Um, do I have a preferred language? I don't know. So far, they, the, the framework or the tool that I prefer is Flutter, but that's always the last one, you know. You find of us people who can code lots of language. Well, the thing is, the language is just a tool. The thing is that once you can code in one language, then you know the basic stuff of uh, coding. That you know how do I solve how do I solve my problem? How do I do that? Do I use a loop? Do I uh, make a function call? How do I add stuff to my collection? How do I iterate over a collection? Those problems are always the same in any language. So whether it's Python or JavaScript or TypeScript, you still have to solve the same problems. And the, the language is just a tool, really. So once you know how to code in one language, it's just a question of learning the syntax, and that's it. But the, the base reflection is always the same. Sorry for the poor comments I wrote during the dishes. Yeah, that's okay. Actually, That's okay. No problem. No problem at all. So if you can see below, right somewhere, uh, is it like somewhere here? Uh, here. There's a goal. Uh, I can remove the chat. All right, right here. I've got a goal. I'm trying to get to 50 followers. So if you know someone who can be interested by this content, do not hesitate to send them my way. If not, ah oh well. Thank you for the follow. That's one more. 45. Five to go. Thank you very much. Uh, so where, where were we and what were we doing? Yes, we were doing this and we don't want that. But we do want that, probably. Let's see what that does. That does nothing. That is not great. Maybe I have a problem and it didn't compile. Let's put that as a const. And then we can remove the const here. No, we don't have a problem. It's just not working, I guess. Ah, oh, that's the search. Ah, okay. So that's the search decoration. I'm good with that. Is there another decoration? I don't... Doesn't seem that there is. Oh, 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 let's... Box decoration. Box decoration. Great. I'm going to give that the same value. Uh, it, it doesn't want to do that. Oh, that's a box decoration. No, that's not what I want then. Flag decoration? Box decoration for the flag image? Image? No, that's not what I want. Unchanged, you need initial selection for the padding sugar to any search decoration. Uh, that's not the right one. Such style, dialogue, textile. Such style, what's, what is such style? We don't know, it's a textile.
It's a textile, okay. Change the scene. Change the scene. Oh yes, change the scene. <laughs> Thank you, Agdia. Change the scene. There we go. I am looking. So, what you didn't see is that. Now when I click, I have my nice rounded border and stuff like that. So I'm happy with that. I would like to have the same thing here, if I can. Not sure I can. Uh, hide main text. No, I don't want to hide main text. I don't think I want to hide main text. Show flag main, flag decoration. Flag decoration. Flag decoration. Flag decoration, uh, dialogue, uh, dialogue size, box decoration for the dialogue. Background color, buyer color, text color. Search decoration. Where is the flag decoration? Flag decoration. Flag decoration is a decoration for the flag image. That could be what I want, but no, because an input decoration cannot be assigned to the parameter decoration. Damn. But then the decoration doesn't have a border, does it? So I cannot instantiate that. And it says bug decoration, which is an extension of decoration. Box decoration doesn't have a border. Yes, it does have a border, but that's a box border. Is this a box border? That's an input border, which is a shape border, which is not which is not a box border. So I guess the thing here is not a text field. That's my guess. So we're gonna have to be creative, maybe. Let's have a look at how this thing is built. So that's the constructor and then it's a stateful widget. So it must have a state, there it is, and it must have a build command, there it is. And if widget builder is not nil, then widget, widget equal inquel on tap and child widget builder selected item. Else Widget text button. Ah, it's a text button. And the text button has a flex child. But my guess is we don't have any way to customize that. Uh, okay, and that has children, does widgets are flexible. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I can wrap that into container, inside a container. Okay, let's just have this like that for now. And now I need to figure out a way to add this custom field and make it not crash. And now it's crashing because uh, I suspect it needs to be expanded. Although I'm not sure. I'm I'm new to this thing, so Yay! Works a lot better, but Okay. I know I know how to fix this. I can fix this. I'd like to have the the, the thing around here. But i I know how to fix this. Okay, country cut picker. Maybe I don't want to have the plus 39 here because that's going to be confusing given that I need to write the oh do I do I have because that's that's that fun thingy that fun validator it should tell me that the phone number is invalid 
So it's not valid. And I'd oh, okay. So that works. So if I let this and then this is... What? This is a valid phone number? This is not valid and this is valid. Okay, so I guess it doesn't need the... I can leave it like that. And then I will normalize the, the phone number. Yes, okay. I will leave it like that. Uh, favorite, yes. I will leave the favorite. The initial selection for now is going to be Switzerland. Because most of the phone number for my client will be Swiss. And I really need to fix that. So that's going to bother me that they are not aligned. So I'm going to have a look at that. Then, why is it French, France and Swiss and not the other way around? I guess it's sorted by... Uh, it's sorted alphabetically. Okay, okay, we can do that. Now I need to fix the custom text form field so that it doesn't... It doesn't add an icon, an icon is there and so I need to tell my custom form field that its icon is actually null. Ta-da! Oh, no, no ta-da. Ah! Ah, the custom text form field is embedded inside something. So, the padding needs to go away and therefore I need I need a edge inset geometry I need a final edge inset geometry padding it needs to be initialized here this dot padding by default it's going to be that Oopsie. Then I'm going to use widget.padding here. And so now nothing has changed. But I can now say padding null. No, I can't because padding is not nullable. So let's make that a nullable padding. And now we have a problem because... Ha! Ah, we can't have a nullable padding because we can't have... Oh, I know. I know. I know. It's an edge geometry... Uh, edge insets... Edge insets... Dot zero. Thank you for the follow... Bipatsama. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Correctly. Welcome to the stream. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland and I do Flutter and other stuff, other language uh, live coding on Twitch and sometimes stuff like uh, using DaVinci Resolve to build um, uh, Twitch interface, Twitch layouts or Maybe I just stream games, but mostly uh, it's um, live coding. And right now I'm learning Flutter, so I'm I'm streaming a lot of Flutter. Right, this looks a lot better now. Okay, so this number is going to be zero seven eight two two three four five six seven eight. This one is invalid, so let's remove two numbers to make it valid. Okay, so now I can save that. I want to... I want to... make it so that when the phone number is invalid, I can't actually validate the form, because right now I can save that, and the phone number is invalid. So, 
let's let's and by the way this is now aligned so i'm happy now um i need to change something here this custom text field needs a validator right this custom text field needs a validator and the validator will be what actually validates the phone number. So we're going to do that. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Here, we're going to save the phone number. Okay? That's unchanged. When we change the value, we save the phone number in a variable. But then when we validate this... Oh! Bummer. That's an async method, and that is probably not an async method. Let's see. Let's try. Okay, so for now, we're going to do that. Um, if value different of null, we're going to validate that. Otherwise, we return. We return nothing. It is it is okay to not have a phone number. But if we do have a phone number, then let's for now validate with the ISO code. Okay, and if it's valid, we should return. Nothing. Else. Else, not else. Return the phone number. Invalid phone number. But that means. Why is that future of bull? Why is that future of bullion? then is a future of string. A string, string, that, yes. And so that should return a string. Why is it returning a boolean? Oh, that's because that's what they said is valid for number ooh phone number is valid for number then And I thought whatever was written by the... the oh, no. The, what, what is written by then is available for the next... Uh, for the next uh, change future. So, that's not going to work. Is it? I'm going to have to validate this. here as I did before and then store that somewhere um well is valid equals boss and if valid so now we have is valid equals valid equals equals true which looks weird but the argument bool can be a same parameter future of bool uh yes there we go that may look a little bit weird but 
I think uh, I can do that like that. I think it's it's better. So if valid is not null, then we get the valid the value for valid. And otherwise, if valid is null, then we get false. Okay. So for, uh, we validate. So right now we we are just validate Swiss phone numbers, and then the validator will say if value is not null because it's okay to have a null value, then well if value different of than null and not valid return invalid number okay so that's not a valid phone number I can switch and then save and it says invalid phone number okay which means now if I add uh, uh, what's wrong with this number zero seven eight two three four five six what now this one this phone number is valid Aha! 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 Now the value didn't change. Is valid false? So save valid phone number and now uh, zero is very true save yeah so it needs to be changed if I just go there and if I don't clear the field then yeah it's not working zero seven eight one two three four five six seven well, that's valid okay by convention the variable which begins by underscore e is of course for boolean choice is it correct by is is of course um i don't know if it's a convention it's something i like to do um i i don't know enough of dart or flutter to know that if that's a convention in dart i find it easier to uh, to locate boolean values when they start by but with is uh, I think because if you have a variable called valid is that a variable is that a function what I, I don't know it could be a, um, a mistake you know if you wanted to say validate for example in French for example valid is the, the verb you know you, you can you can have a function valid, which means it's going to validate something. And it also means it is valid. So I, I like to start my Boolean variables with is just for that. So I know that is valid means is this thing valid and not, you know, called some kind of, of function that would do something di totally different. The thing is with, with, um, the thing is with conventions is that they actually only apply when there are multiple people working on a project, right? Because if you're working alone, then you don't really need conventions unless you're going to publish your source code. And even if you publish your source code, you might not like the standard conventions. Because, you know, I know in Python, I, re I deactivate a lot of the, um, what is it, the, um, the default conventions. Uh, because I don't, I don't want to have to put um, comments in every file, every class, every function while I develop my code. And I always said, if the code is not clear enough, to be understood without any comments, then maybe there's something wrong. Maybe, 
there's something wrong. Um, sometimes you have very complex code, and then you need to add some commands for, you know, anyone who can, we would maybe um, code uh, take your code later on. But if you do, if you use clear variable names, clear na function names, and add spaces where, you know, blank lines where they are needed to understand that it's another block of code, then the conventions are only there for, for teams. You know, when, when you have teams of developers in big companies, right, you have groups of developers and one group is developing something and maybe, you know, maybe next month that's going to have a, a bug and someone else is going to have to get into the code. And if everyone uses different um, conventions to name the variables or the functions or stuff like that, then it's going to be hell, right? But um, but if you're working alone or, or in a small group, take whatever conventions you want. If you want your booleans to be to start with is, then that's okay. If you don't want them to start with is, that's okay. There's no hard truth, truth, right? It's um, it's however you want to use it. Maybe simple Shaker will become a big company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's good to you know have dreams. It is really. I would love to uh, for that to become popular. It's gonna be open source anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna release the source on GitHub, but I'm also probably gonna ask for you know one or two francs for for the app. Just just so you know some I can get something back. Um uh, we'll see. I don't know. Having an open source software doesn't mean you can't sell the 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 final product, you know. It's not not just uh, compiling it. I mean, it, it costs 100 francs per year to put an uh, apps on the App Store and 25 francs a year to put apps on the Play Store. So I'm, I'm already done 125 francs. So <laughs> see, if I can get to... If I can get to 125 francs, maybe I'd switch the app to free. But then on the Play Store, once an app is free, you cannot make it uh, paid for again. So you can uh, you can start with an app that you know you sell for whatever price you want. You can make that app a free app afterwards, but then you can't go back to having it being a paid app. So I don't know. I'll see. I know I have uh, uh, colleagues who have apps on the App Store and they sell their app for five francs, I think. Um, that makes them a little, very, very little income, but enough to pay for the the developer certificate every year. So why not? You know, we will see. I have to finish this first and make it usable for everyone first. So. Okay, um, right, phone number, I have, I made this, I'm going to change this to an const icon, dot icons, uh, icon of icons dot phone, yeah, let's do that, yeah, why is it blue, why is it blue? Let's go back to the child's first name. Why is it blue? Do, 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 do. Oh, because that's decoration, input decoration, icon. And... Ah, ooh, hmm. Hmm. That was the decoration of a text of a text form field.
Uh, no. 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 Yes. <laughs> this icon is the decoration of is the decoration of the text form field, which is why it's grey. So I probably have to change the color here for this icon so that it's not blue. Icon takes a color which is a color. Okay, so show. Okay, um. what icon? Const icon. This icon. Ah, okay. So that's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah. There and now we can add color here. But what color will will that be? We don't have the theme in there, so we need to pass the theme to to our phone number thingy. Well, I. I know, I don't have to pass it, I can get it, but I need the context then. Actually, it should be, it probably is a good idea to pass the context anywhere, everywhere, because we could use that. So that's gonna be the build context here. Build context. Context. Text. I, if I could type, type it would help. Now I get the theme and to I have do I have color scheme no text theme text theme no, that's not what I want. Color scheme. Color scheme. Thank you. Uh, that would be... Uh, I don't know which one. Let's, let's use background, even though background is not a constant, that's why it's complaining. And it's still complaining about what? What is it complaining about? Invalid constant value. Yeah, that's because I changed the wrong thing. There we go. Eh, not the correct one, I'm afraid. I'm gonna have to search. So it's not background. It's some kind of gray, but which one could that be? Hmm. I don't know. Not the on background. Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna. No, this is this one, but with a a slightly less gray. So, can we just have a look at text form field and see? I don't think we. I've already looked at that for like hours and still don't understand how they build that. <laughs> So, is there an icon somewhere? 
There should be an icon somewhere. Icon? Come on, icon. Show yourself. Uh, oh, it's the decorator. It's in the input decoration. And the input decoration has an icon. And... And it's, it has a border and I think the, the input decoration... <sighs> icon is null. I wish there was a website with all the, the, the default colors and stuff like that so we couldn't, so that I could use that because that's the input decorator and it has an icon and I want to be able to change the, the color of that icon. Uh, what's that? This example shows a text wheel with a text rich with widget and the label. The widget contains multiple text widgets with different textiles. Yeah, no. probably not what I'm looking for. I don't know what color they use, and that is that a oh, prefix icon. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That. Yeah, it's weird. Um, icon again. Icon again. By default, the focus color is based on the current theme. The decorations container is the area which is filled, if filled is true, and bordered per the border. It's the area adjacent to icon. Yes, adjacent to icon, but what is the color of the icon? I think it's the color of the border. So it's the fill color. Standard border color. Where do I get the standard border border color? Disabled border, no. Enable, enabled border. The border to display when the input decorator is enabled and is not showing an error. So does the icon use that? Enabled border. Oh, border. Simply border. Wow. The shape of the... Oh. The shape of the border to draw around the decorations container. Hmm. Color, fill color, focus over. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to have a look at that. That's okay for now. It's going to stay this way. I need to move on. We need to take the country code into consideration when we validate the phone number. So that means that means here we need to store the country code somewhere. So let's do that. Uh, string String with a big S. Country code equals nothing. When we select a country, we need to do country code equals country code. And country code is a string. Oh, it's a country code. So we need the country code dot code. But that can be null, I guess. Yes, so country code should be a string. And it's going to be null, null by default. Okay, when I select a country, the country code is stored there. I don't need to write that anymore. And then when I validate the phone number, then... Then, oh, no, when I do unchange... ISO code is the country code. 
and ISO code is the required string. So we'll pass an empty string and then we'll keep the is valid for now. Is it normal you do not see the phone? Yes, I didn't uh, I didn't show the emulator just yet. I'm using the emulator today. Uh, my phone was not charged. I forgot to charge it and it was not working. And I don't really need the, the phone. So I just show the emulator whenever I need to show you something. Uh, yes, so... And since the emulator doesn't stay on top, as soon as I click on VS Code, then it disappears. Uh, do, 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 do. So that should do it whenever this is validated. Yes, I think. Let's try. Let's go back to the output here and, and go there. So, Swiss number, and let's say it's not valid. Is valid false? It is indeed false. This is a f invalid Swiss phone number, but now I have a French phone number, and now it's valid. Okay. Okay, but if I go there and now tell that it's a Swiss phone number and then save that, it's going to be very happy to save that for me. So it means every time I change the country code, I either need to... validate the phone number again uh, somewhere here either that or I just I just go with is valid equals false which is the easy way so this is a valid phone, a valid Swiss phone number. And it, yes, but I need to, okay, I need to do that. So that's a valid Swiss phone number, which, come on, I just told you, oh, hmm, it's probably not validating again. It's a valid Swiss phone number, and uh, I can record that. And now if I go there, valid again, it's no longer a valid phone number. Why? Because it did not validate... I think it did not validate that. Validating phone number. Okay. So valid is false. Yes, valid is false because because that. So should I I should go with valid is true by default. So if I go there, open that, save that, it does save. Now if I go there and say that it's a French phone number and save and now it's invalid but it did validate the phone number came here but it didn't it didn't I didn't go there That's because this thing is asynchronous Because it's calling await channel invoke method is valid phone number. 
Ok. Channel is meta channels. Ok. Uh, I don't really like that, but I don't know how to do uh, to do it any other way. Can I don't think we can await that because that we're not in an asynchronous function. Try marking the function body with either async or async star. Oh, we can. We can actually do that. Ah, all right. I didn't know we could do that, but let's do that then. So this is an asynchronous method and we're going to validate the phone number. Can we do that? Yes, we can do that. We can do that. We can definitely do that by doing bool valid equals await that. And now it doesn't want to do that because the argument of type future string, future string cannot be assigned to string, function string. That's a string? Is valid phone number? It's not a string. Okay, let's uh let's let's go back a step or two here. So that was valid because this was a future of Boolean. Okay. So this here is a string star, so we need to move that down here. Okay, and that is a future boolean. Okay. Let's say that this is asynchronous and it says... Ah! It's not gonna work because validator waits for a string. And... Wait. No, it's not gonna work. No, it's not gonna work. Because if it's an asynchronous method, then it's going to return a future of string. And Validator doesn't want that. Validator doesn't want that. I hate asynchronous methods. I hate them. Validator needs that, but then we didn't call un unchanged because we didn't do. We didn't change the uh, this thing, and because we didn't change this thing, we didn't change the phone number. Uh, Huh. Maybe we need to initialize. Maybe we need to initialize is valid. Another way. So when we enter this, can we do a validation? An asynchronous validation. Do we have the country code? We will. We don't. We don't right now, but we will. But if we assume that the country code is Switzerland for now, and 
what we want to validate is folder dot phone number. Why is it complaining? Then, then, then void because we don't need anything. Okay. And then that's going to be initial valid. Initial value is valid. Okay. So that will initialize is valid properly. But then when I'm going to change the country code, it's going to get invalid again. So that's where I... Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. I got it. I think I've got it. When we change the country code, then we call that... And then we're going to use the country code that... Uh, code? A country code. That like country code, yes. Uh, hold on, I need to send a message. Okay. ISO code equals country code. And that's not working because it's all so, so that, so. Or we could do that. And that's uh, country code changed. So when we change the country code, we validated that. When we change the phone number, we validated that too. Here. Same way. And then this is using is valid. Uh, let's see. So we go here. And we say, it says validate initial value true. I can save that. I didn't change anything. I can save that. That's okay. I'm going here. I'm going here. And I change this number. I add one. It's still valid. And now it says it's not. Why is it not valid? Why is it not valid? Because we don't have a country code. Because... No, we do have a country code. I think. Is it valid? So... Padding... No, 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 no. Here. Initial value. We have... Ah. I hope it's not validating the initial value. No, it's not validating the initial validating the initial value. It just says is valid false. And is valid false comes from here. Uh, country code. And uh, what, what am I using? Value. And uh, why is country code white? Oh, that's okay. Let's try again. Initial value it's, is valid, yes. Now I remove the zero and it doesn't have a country code. It says country code is null. Which is why it's not working. But then if I select Swiss here, it is true for the country code. Okay. Oh, yes, of course, we don't have an initial value for the country code. I think I have said that 
do oh, initial selection ch here's what we're gonna do here's what we're going to do we're going to add the country code into the folder here we're going to add string country code uh it's an optional string is it we want one yeah let's say it's it's there but for the sake of of that i need to initialize it there when we clone that we need to clone the country code also but now from db map i'm gonna have to add that by default because i don't have anything in the database just yet for that which means now when i read so i'm going to have to do that when i read a record from the database i should have a country code of ch okay so let's try that nope no nope. it's still not working uh why why is it not working probably because we didn't give the country code to something we are not using the country code to validate the phone number that's why that's probably why unchanged country code so that's not country code we can forget about that now that's going to be folder.country code okay we can remove this country code from here and then correct this this is folder.country code right that's the we're going to validate with that and when we change the phone number we are also going to validate with the country code stored in the folder okay this doesn't exist anymore this is also folder oops folder.country code uh we need curly braces country code yes okay so the oh My headphones were stuck. Because I not only did I forget to charge my phone, but I also forgot to f charge my uh, wireless headsets. So, um, so when we arrive here, we are going to validate that with the folder that country code, right, and then the phone number so when we get in there we should have a valid phone number because we should not be able to well actually this should always be true when we initialize the phone widget but let's see well we'll see then if we only change the phone number on change we're going to validate with the current country code and the new value and if that is valid then that's okay then when we change the country on change we're setting the country code and then we are validating with the country code and the phone number and that should work that should work. Let's try again. So, save. That works. Go there. It's a Swiss phone number. Remove one number. It's a ECH and that is that's not valid. And then I add a number that is valid, and I can save that. Okay. But now if I go there and switch to France, that is now a invalid phone number, but it says it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is. It is a valid phone number for France. 
wow, we've got to be very careful there. But it is a valid phone number for France. Wow. Okay, why not? Is it a valid phone number for, um, I don't know, United States or Etats-Unis in French? Huh? What? Etats-Unis d'Amérique. And that is not a valid phone number for the US. So what is a valid phone number for the US? Why 800? Two six five. No, that's not gonna be a valid phone number. No, I don't know how US phone numbers are for my formatted. <laughs> US phone number format plus one yes plus one but plus one what uh, for example here's a US based phone number in standard formatting here's the same phone number in easy so plus one four one five 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 two six seven one so, plus one, four, one, five, 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 two, six, six, one, five, 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 two, six, six, one. Uh, It's... Oh, yes, it says it's true. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, is... I need to check something. If the first name is not valid, and then I type something... Ah, okay. So it does the same. Okay. But now... It didn't save the number. Why? What did I do? Five by five. Four, four, one, five, six, 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 six. No. Four, one, five, 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 five. Four, one, five. Oh. Oh, five, five, five is the, is the, the, the TV thing. Four, one, five, 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 five. One, two, three, four. Okay, US and... And thing. So it's store. Change. It didn't change anything. Why? Why? So I set the country code in the folder. I set the phone number in the folder. Uh, yes, that's the unchange. Because I don't store the value for the phone number. That's why. That's why I forgot to do that. So that's folder that phone number equals value. And I probably don't need that, but I would leave that anyway. I'm going to remove this print here. I'm going to remove this print here, and I'm going to do -do 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 remove this print here. And this one should always be true. So let's validate that. Let's say 
Let's remove that. Okay. Okay, we've got our validation. Okay, we need to store something and then we need to store that in the database. All right, so let's go to our utils folder, our database util. We're gonna add a new modification. So if version equals equals seven, then await db.execute. And we're going to execute this SQL statement, which is alter table folder, add country code text. Okay. And now we need to initialize, open our database in version seven. We need to hot reload, hot restart our application. Use phone number patterns. Uh, I, I don't have to do that. I, well, I could, but then I would have to know the patterns for every country and set the pattern dynamically, well, the format dynamically. It's a good idea. I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to keep that in mind. Maybe I could use the the normalized version of the phone number, but I already have the country code in the flag, so I don't know. Okay, uh, I need to go to folder, and now when I send the object to the database, then the column country code in the database is the country code, country code and this object and when we read that back we read row country code country code as a optional string and now we should be able to store this so let's read that it probably doesn't have a country code right now but that's a valid phone number. I'm just going to force the validation again and then save. And then go back here, change this, save. It's not going to let me. I'm going to add plus one. And we have one. And we're going to change that to a French phone number, which is a valid phone number as we saw earlier. Come back here and it doesn't work. Is it given with the country picker? Uh, that's a very good question. Is the format given by the country picker? Country code picker will return. That's not what I want. That's this this that I want because that returns a country code. What's in there? There's a name. There's the flag URI. There's the code, the dial code. That no, nope, that's it. That's all there is. That's all there is. That is all there is. Oh, there's a I know, localized. That's the name. Two string. Oh, two long string. Two country string only. That sends the clean name. Oh, that's that. Now that gives the name of the country. That doesn't give the the format. Because that's not dedicated to phone numbers. It's just a. It's just something that will give you the name um, and the phone prefix and the ISO code. But I'm sure we can find a library that does that. You know, we give it the country code and it gives us the formatted phone number. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, where was I? I was trying to, to debug why why the country code was not set properly here. Return padding. I can phone country code picker. Uh, init uh, 
Because I'm an idiot, of course. What else? Boulder country code. There we go. And we go back here, and I think it worked. Yes. So now we turn that into a... a US phone number. That doesn't work. And so... 4155552456788. That is a valid phone number for the US. Store that. Change that. Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! That's good. That is good. I need to fix the color of the icon. I need to. If I can. Um, show a border around the flag. And as you suggested, maybe if I can use phone, phone number pattern. Flutter. Format phone numbers. Okay, there are libraries. Lib phone number. A wrapper around lib phone number with, with added functionality merge in from the following libs. Phone number and Flutter multi-formatter. What am I using? I'm using... What? I'm using... I'm using some library already. Right. What do I use to validate the phone number? This and this comes from lib phone number. And this thing said this one, I like this one, says it wraps lib phone number. The main advantage of this lib is it lets you optionally format a phone number synchronously without making calls into lib phone number with platform calls. Ah, I like that, but I'm going to have to dig deep into this. I'm not going to do that on stream, but I'm going to have a look and I might come back this afternoon to show the implementation of that and, and you know, keep, um, keep working on this thing. Uh, how long has it been? Two hours, one hour and one hour. And 58 minutes, so I think it's time that we stop there. All right, let's see who's who's streaming. We're going to raid someone. Let's see who is streaming. Uh, I need to go there and there, and then I need to go there. Who's live right now? Nobody. Nobody is live, so... Okay. Uh, let's search. Let's search something. What can we search for? Uh, Flutter? Let's search. Let's. Someone who's doing Flutter. Who's live. Uh, no. No. So, what, what, what are we looking for? Development? Do you have any. Do you want to read someone in particular? Uh, let's see. Software development. That is not giving me anything. Um, I don't want music. I want software and games development. Let's see what we have. We have live people doing stuff. Uh, what do we want to... In details, programming. I don't know. Yeah, let's let's read Rockstar seventy four. Why not? You are driving. Okay, it's it's okay. <laughs> no problem. 
No problem at all. So let's raid Rockstar74. Raid the channel. There we go. We're going to raid them. So thank you for joining Akdir. Thank you, um, Relaxman. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, Vipat Sama, for the follow. Uh, this has been recorded live on Twitch on the 3rd of October. And if you're watching that on YouTube, uh, well, um, click on the bell and subscribe. If you're watching that on the Twitch VOD, follow. Uh, I'm four followers short of uh, getting uh, affiliate. So uh, hopefully that's going to happen in, in uh, the near future. And uh, see you, Agdir, and we are going to raid Rockstar now. So let's start the raid. Thank you very much, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.